Howdy y'all. Today, I'm starting a new series on unsung heroes. There are many idolized figures throughout American history, but for every hero we recognize, there are 10 more in the background, doing similar work and enduring similar trials without the accolades. That's why I've started this mini-series, to recognize the men and women who, in my mind, did not receive the respect they deserve. Before we dive into this episode, I want to briefly talk about Memorial Day. It's no accident that the first episode of this series takes place on the last Monday of May. I know a lot of well-meaning folks who want to talk about their brothers and sisters serving in the military, but that's Veterans Day. Memorial Day isn't for the members of the armed forces currently serving or for those who have given sweat, blood, and tears. Memorial Day is for honoring those who paid the ultimate sacrifice. Since it's Memorial Day, today's unsung heroes are going to be Americans who served in the Korean War. Now the Korean War is already known as the Forgotten War, so almost anyone who fought in this war would qualify as an unsung hero. But I want this episode to focus on the 2nd Infantry Division. When most people think of the Korean War, they think of the Frozen Chosen, or the Chosen Few. These are the Marines and the Regimental Combat Team 31 who fought at the Chosen Reservoir in temperatures so frigid that men with shattered legs survived because the cold sealed their wounds. We aren't going to talk about them, <laughs> because they're too well known for this series. Heck, the Chosen Few even had Chesty Polar, arguably the most glorified service member of all time. So that's why we're going to talk about the 2nd ID, under Major General Lawrence B. Dutch Kaiser, currently fighting on the other side of Korea. On the 25th of November 1950, the Chinese launched the 2nd Chinese Offensive. This offensive targeted the 1st Marine Division of 10th Corps, 3 divisions of the Republic of Korea's 2nd Corps, and the 2nd ID of the 9th Corps. Since 2nd ID was on the right flank of the 9th Corps, and was the only American division east of the Chongchun River, they received the brunt of the attack. By November 27th, the Chinese routed the Republic of Korea's 2nd Corps. On November 28th, the Chinese defeated the Turkish forces on the 2nd ID's right flank. If it makes you feel any better, I didn't know the Turkish forces fought in Korea either. The Republic of Korea and Turkish defeats forced Kaiser to withdraw his forces south to form a defensive perimeter around Gunuri. From here it was clear that the 2nd ID would have to withdraw to Suncheon. Kaiser might have followed the 25th ID east to Anju, but false reports indicated that the Chinese had already blocked this route. So Kaiser headed south without realizing that this was the worst route to his destination. The Chinese had outflanked the 2nd ID and established roughly 5 miles of roadblocks on the route. This route would later be known as the Gauntlet. Despite airstrikes and infantry armor attacks, the Chinese retained their roadblocks and the 2nd ID was forced to abandon the road. According to historian Roy E. Appleman, the 2nd ID sustained 4,307 casualties in killed, wounded, and missing. The division also lost all of their engineering equipment, half of their vehicle-mounted radios, and hundreds of trucks and jeeps. Thankfully, the Chinese did not completely destroy 2nd ID. Colonel Paul L. Freeman managed to save the majority of his 23rd Infantry Regiment by firing off his entire stock of 3,206 artillery shells within the span of 20 minutes. After this shocking barrage, Colonel Freeman took his regiment back north to take the Gunuri Anju Road instead. In less than a week, Colonel Freeman's regiment would become the only combat effective part of 2nd ID. You're probably wondering why I'm bringing up this sobering story. After all, this is America. We don't glorify defeat. I bring this up to recognize that in a massive war, despite our overwhelming firepower and superior intelligence, the enemy gets a vote too, and some defeats are inevitable. Soldiers who die in battle should be honored, whether we win or lose. So this Memorial Day, don't forget about the men from the 2nd ID who fought and died in Korea, because those men served their country and helped forge one of the greatest international allies we have today. God bless you, and God bless America.